All right, we are live. Hello to everybody joining us here live as well as on the recording. I'm Rebecca Redis. I'm the founder of Radiant LA, a premier training and development firm and the author of Social Media Mastery, as well as the creator of the best-selling course, The Smart Guide to Marketing Your Business on Social Media. And as always, I am joined by the one, the only, the beautiful <laughs> Diana Adams. And Diana, you are an Apple ACN. You need to explain yeah. that to me. ACN stands for Apple Consultants Network. Okay. So, so you are out there busy, busy, busy working with people that have huge networks right. that, yeah, okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I know that you are a lifelong entrepreneur as well, which is what we definitely have in common. And uh, one of the biggest areas we connected was in blogging and you've yes. been blogging forever and ever. Uh, not nearly as long as you, but yes, for a long yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have definitely racked up more, uh, probably words and hours than I have. <laughs> My goodness. I think you're up to what? 5,000 articles at this not, point? Not quite. Quite as many, but yeah. we we both love to write. I think it's safe to say that for sure. And we both love to talk about technology, yes. marketing, yes. digital transformation, and that is everything we're going to talk about here today. Yes. Yeah, as yeah, we chat about, about how to put your marketing roadmap into place for 2018, and I am super excited about this because there. Are I, I, I think there's a lot of change every single year, but this year it just feels like we've been on warp speed. Yeah, exactly. It feels like everything is kind of pivoting um, more so now than ever before. And so I'm excited to talk about these things too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I know it's no surprise to you um, or those that have followed me for a while, but I love acronyms. <laughs> Oh, I know. Are, you do. They, you know, from a marketing perspective, from a psychology perspective, they just make things sticky in your brain. Um, yeah. Very easy to recall, very easy to go back to. So we're going to talk today about how you can dominate, dominate, dominate your market. And of yes. course, that's an acronym for a whole I lot of things. That. I yeah, love that. Yes, we're, so we're going to dissect. So I don't know if it's creativity. It's just having fun. <laughs> Well, that's the best kind of creativity. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's start. And, and why don't you kick us off? Let's talk about what the D in Dominic yes. stands for. The D stands for Design and Agile and Strategic Approach to Marketing. And I think out of everything that we are talking about today, that one is my favorite. Um, you know, you and I are huge proponents of that. And I even was thinking, all right, let me list some examples of things we do on a daily basis. And I thought of so many things. Mm. Um, why don't you talk about a little bit about your approach to that? I know you're the master when it comes to strategy, um, which in my mind leads to more productivity and way less time. So I think you yeah. should talk a little bit about that because you're that's your that's your wheelhouse completely. <laughs> well, and it's it's interesting because when when I switched over to uh, agile or lean methodology within marketing, right. it was a bit of undiscovered territory where it, that's what it was there for as far as product development. Right. But weaving that into marketing was a little bit of a challenge, and right. uh, just from that old school thinking, the way right. that we used to do things, whereas that that agile approach it's iterative um, but not iterative just for the sake of it right you're creating your objectives um, you are uh, really testing out your hypothesis uh, you're learning from those daily initiatives and then you're adjusting uh, and proceeding and I think what's so beautiful about this and how you can really tap into this in 2018 is whether you are a solopreneur you're working on your own or you have a team it really brings unity to everything yes. that you're doing. Would Absolutely. It, yeah. That is my favorite part of that methodology. Mm -hmm. Now, like you said, it requires a complete shift and how we may you may have normally thought about your marketing approach. Sure. So it really is kind of flips it on its head. Uh, but give it a <laughs> chance, really, because it, it can really produce some amazing results. But my favorite part of it is the collaboration aspect. 
um, kind of breaking down those silos and really focusing on uh, collaboration. I love that. Yes, absolutely. Well, and what it does is it gives you the ability to move quickly. So yes. instead of getting stuck, instead of wasting your time on things that just aren't working. So looking back at 2017 and really reflecting from a data backed approach, what worked, yes. what didn't and what can you change? So it, it takes that idea of creating if, and you'll remember this, you know, back in the day when we were creating a 12 month marketing calendar. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh -uh. now you're looking at it from, all right, what is our assumption? How are we going to test those assumptions and those variables? And then how are we going to measure that test so that we can continue to iterate, continue to produce better? Uh, more effective results. And I think what we saw for, uh, gosh, the big eye opener for us when we first started working like this as a team was how quickly we could move right. uh, and how much we were paying attention to every teeny tiny piece yes. of what was going on within our marketing team, as opposed to, you know, how easy it is to put a new campaign, let's say, into effect, and a week goes by, and then two weeks go by, and we've kind of paid attention, but you haven't really. <laughs> right, now, all right. of a sudden you realize, oh crap, nothing is performing the way I wanted it to. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. And being data-driven, is it? this kind of takes it to the 10th degree, right? Because like you said, you're looking at every single little detail and being very, um, having the ability to pivot I think mm -hmm. is is what you and I have talked about so many times, you know, just being able to respond to change quickly is the key for that. So you're right. It yeah. changes everything. The whole mindset is different. Instead of thinking, OK, for next year, I'm going to keep doing the same thing. I'm just going to work harder and things are going to change, you know, throw right. that out and instead add add some more strategy to your approach. And I know that um, our fav one of our favorite tools for this is Jira. Right. With yes. the sprints. Atlassian. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah, which which really does fit into. So we run in sprints, which is right. very aligned with this thinking, um, which it can be anywhere from you know two weeks, depending on what your sprints look like. Our sprints are one week at a time. So right. that means I like that. that our, yeah, yeah, as a team, we're looking at how much can we actually get done as a team within this week. So what's realistic? Um, but also what is going to push us? What's going to challenge us? Um, and it creates that sense of unity, like I said, because we're all working together towards right. the same goal. We all know what uh, is on our plate. So there's a lot of accountability in this as well, which I know yes. we all really, really like. Yeah, so a lot like of, well, a lot of transparency in that too, where if, you know, I fall down, everybody knows, you know, you know what is blocking you, what is I keeping you. I was just you. about to say that. Yes. Yeah. In addition to that, everybody knows what's blocking certain tasks. Everybody knows who they're waiting for to finish this so they can immediately pick it up and do this. I mean, just fantastic tool. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. as Natasha just said, absolutely don't work harder, work smarter. Yeah, <laughs> and that's exactly. what this is all about. And I think a lot of times people think, oh, moving fast. It means that I'm just pivoting or making decisions for the sake of it. Absolutely not. In fact, this is the exact opposite. opposite. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit more. I've got some suggestions as we go along into how you can really start to test what you can pay attention to, yeah. what you can update, things that maybe you haven't looked at in a while uh, that deserve some dusting off. Right, exactly. All right, uh, let's see, dominate, dominate. We have, what's the O? Yeah, O is optimize your customer experience. Oh, I changed my mind. This one's my favorite. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling everyone is going to be your favorite within this? Oh, so many people will stop doing business with a company because of poor customer service. Now, um, good customer service is not necessarily creating a experience 
Okay, just good, good customer service is not an experience. And maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit, Rebecca. I actually found a very cool graphic that you linked to in one of your posts that I'm gonna drop in here while you're talking about this because I think it really sums up how important this is. Mm, that's awesome. Well, so let's just talk about how you can optimize your customer experience because I think I think you're right. I think uh, you know it, it all takes a, some thought, uh, some stepping back, oftentimes. So taking a quick step back so that you can move forward in a more productive way and really meet the needs of your audience. So as you're thinking about what that marketing roadmap looks like to optimize your customer experience, first identify what are those top three problems that you're solving for your audience? For example, if I take us as entrepreneurs um, and I look at the top three issues that are challenges that entrepreneurs across the board deal with every single day, they are, and you'll probably guess these, Diana, networking, attracting clients, and sales. All three of those huge challenges. So huge. now... Yeah, now I can back myself into those, right? As I think about what is my solution. So as my audience is connecting with me, those perfect customers, what are they looking for from me? What is it that I'm gonna be able to provide that is gonna solve that particular problem? Yes. The key in, you know, it was in 2017, it's going to be again in 2018, but we've got to get hyper focused on creating a wow customer experience. And I really yes. believe that all begins and ends with us, with our product, with our service, and with how we're providing those solutions. So it can't just be a band aid solution, it can't just be something that everybody else is doing, and we've just kind of packaged it up a little bit different. You really have to ha take a good hard look at is this transformational? Is this creating a wow moment for your audience? We've talked a lot about generating leads off of uh, you know social media and why why aren't you getting more leads out of your social media? And you know so often that customer experience is such a huge part of that uh, right. where you just haven't answered their questions. Those questions of why should I care? Why should should I do business with you? Yes. Why are you better than the competition? Why, 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 why? Yes. <laughs> so and, many uh, things that we're yeah. not solidifying. Be a problem solver. That sums up what you have said. That's so important. And respond quickly. That's a mm. big one too, right? Yes. I have uh, two very quick customer experience stories that just happened yesterday that I think are great examples. Marsha Collier's birthday was yesterday and she flew to New York City and when she got there and got off the plane, the American Airlines staff had a whole happy birthday gift for her and they were singing in this huge celebration for her birthday when she got off the plane. Now that wow. is something she is always going to remember. See, that's mm -hmm. what you wanna do. When you think about customer experience, think about how you can seep into the subconscious <laughs> of that person. Yeah. You're never gonna forget. Yeah. Right? She's never going to forget. And I'll tell you something that happened with one of my clients. Um, she's the executive assistant for the owner of the company. And his wife called her and said, I need you to get out all of our Christmas cards today. Well, she doesn't have time for that. So right. her printer's not working. She calls me all stressed out. How do I make this work? How, ca how can I make this happen? And I said, you know what? Just outsource the whole thing to me. I'll uh, take care of it. Yeah. And she could not believe that I was willing to do that, which, you know, I, I'll do anything, right? It's completely fine. I'll set up. Absolutely. Christmas card. If you want me to do that, that's going to make your job easier. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. And it took me, what, 30, 45 minutes to print off those labels. And, 
And it was done and it made her day. She couldn't mm. believe it. And I thought, okay, she is going to remember this yeah. for a long time. And so it's just those little things. Put yourself in your customer's shoes. What can you do that's going to make their life better? Something they're going to remember. And you really have to have um, empathy and you have to really understand your customer to pull this yeah. off because it may not be something that's important to you. You may think, ah, oh, what's the big deal? But think about it. Put put yourself in that person's shoes. Yeah, well, it's, it's what we talk it. about. Yeah, with those micro moments, right? Where right. you found a moment and you're so good at this. And I think there were so many takeaways from your story there where you have to listen. You have to be a giver. You have to go above and beyond. You have to be willing to do what nobody else is doing. Right. To really create those memorable moments to stand out in the mind of your customer and to create that differentiation that right. everybody is so desperately trying to do. So that is You're awesome. right. Yeah. And the O here uh, in dominate is optimize customer experience. And the reason yeah. you want to optimize that is because if you can optimize, if you, in other words, if you can find a way to create those experiences, they're going to be more consistent. And the more consistent yes. you can create those experiences, the better. Yeah. Yeah. So many great points there. Wow. I think we could spend just on those two. I know. I D and O. Right. <laughs> we could spend an hour just on those two. So let's oh, talk about okay. M, which is managing your marketing stack. Okay. This one really is my favorite. I mean See, it now. I told you. I mean it. <laughs> Actually, I imagine this one is your favorite because yeah. when you talk about the tools and technologies, that the marketing team, whether it's just you as a solopreneur or whether you have a team, those tools and technologies are so important and it's so important to to manage those, to do a, an audit every so often and figure out which ones you're using, which ones aren't you using, where's their gap where right. you need to find better ones. But this is your, again, uh, you are the tool queen, Rebecca. You're always trying new tools. Every time I talk to you, you're like, ah, I'm trying this new tool. <laughs> Well, it is what I do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> because it, it goes along with our philosophy, which is we don't teach anything we don't actually do. That's right. So we got we to gotta learn before we can actually share with other people. And I think this is a great time for reflection and taking stock, taking stock of the tools and the technologies that you're using every single day within your business. So whether you, you know, sit down and you actually write it down, whether you open a doc, write down every single one of the tools that you're using, whether they're free, right. whether they're paid. Um, and, and you need to really evaluate, first of all, are they still serving you? Are they still helping you? Or are they creating more work? Which sometimes this can start to creep in and you don't even realize it. Right, um, or you make like a little workaround, like, oh, this tool right. isn't doing it right, so, but that's okay, I know a workaround. Because right. you don't take time to stop and analyze it at that moment, you're like, all right, every time I use this I just have to remember to do this funky little thing right and then before you yeah. know it it's not even serving you anymore <laughs> no that and I see so often times that people are using multiple technologies that overlap they do oh, right. the same yeah. exact things and you 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 just you have those payments on autopilot and you're not even paying attention so it's a good time to take a look at your budget figure out what is it that I'm paying for what is it actually doing for me uh, and is it what I need going forward and that's where you have to be really clear too on what are you going to do more of uh, in 2018 and what are those tools that you're going to need to support you so let's say that video creation is a big part of your 2018 marketing strategy well what tools are you going to need are you going to do live video are you going to do recorded video are you going to edit those yourself are you going to outsource that uh, what exactly does that look like um, and and just simplify I always come back to this because we tend to as entrepreneurs and business owners, we we go, okay, so I need to do this and this and this and this, and I need 50 <laughs> different tools to make all of that happen. And you don't. You don't. Yeah. Yeah, so I bring know. it, I, I like to always bring it down to its simplest 
form. Yeah, I'll give you a quick example. We just migrated. So we uh, we were using ConvertKit for email for about the last year. And I am a huge fan of ConvertKit. But what ended up happening is we were spread out. We were using ConvertKit. We were using lead pages. We were using Optimize Press. We were using just multiple different uh, tools to create our landing pages, to create our marketing workflows, to generate forms, to, you know, embed our video, just so many different tools. And when I started to do the research and look at the marketplace and uh, started reaching out to all of my peers, what, what are you using? What are you testing? What's working for you? I found that there was a, a solution that allowed us to bring everything together. So we just moved over gosh, what, two months ago to ClickFunnels. Haven't been happier. Uh, I don't think with a tool in a very long time. Um, so it's it's just taking a look at what are your needs? What right. do you actually need to accomplish within your marketing in 2018? And what are those three tools, three at max, that are gonna help you get there in the easiest and quickest way possible. And this all feeds into our first point, which is be lean, be agile, um, so that you can see the data, so that you can get those landing pages up quickly, so that you can start creating the right content for your audience and not get stuck in the weeds, which again, we often do, <laughs> and the weeds are what keep us spinning and not actually doing. Yes, I could not agree more. And I love that, working it down to three main tools. Yeah. Ooh, simplify, yes. simplify, that simplify. Forces you, that forces you to avoid that overlap and yes. to really focus on what you need. I love that. All right, so I, let's talk yeah. about, I is integrating multi-channel marketing which of course we've been doing this for yeah. several years now, um, but this isn't going away. And I, I think this is one you're super passionate about. Is this your favorite now? <laughs> uh, yes, I actually, <laughs> I do like this one a lot for real because customers are not all gonna be on one channel, right? They're not all gonna be in the same place. Exactly. So you wanna have a uniform, uni unified message everywhere, whether it's on your website, on your email, on your social media, on your SMS messaging, marketing, whatever it may be, you want it to be a unified message across the board. I think that is so important. And I read a stat and um, boy, I wish I would have saved that article link that people who connect with a brand on different in different channels like this, they spend more money. I think it was three to four times more money. Mm, wow, yeah. that's compelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and as you said, it's, it's streamlining. So this goes back to the customer experience. It's meeting your right. audience where they're spending time, uh, but also sharing the type of content that they're looking for on that particular channel. So you have to think about, uh, from email marketing mm -hmm. to your social media marketing, uh, to utilizing chat bots. You mentioned right. just all of the different technologies we have available to us. What type of information, what type of conversation are right. they looking for across each one of those channels? So it doesn't mean you're reinventing the wheel for every single one. What it right. does is you're just reimagining that particular piece of content, that particular campaign, that strategy for each of those channels and the exact experience you want to provide. So that experience you want to provide on Facebook, that experience that you want to provide through your email marketing, that experience that you're providing through maybe those chatbots where right. you're allowing people to connect with you and better provide uh, customer support. So, so many different ways to do this. And again, I would always say simplify. Don't feel as if you, you have to tackle it all at once. Figure out where your strongest outlet is. So where are you getting the biggest bang for your marketing buck right now? Uh, and consider doubling down on that in 2018. Go all in. Uh, what we're not saying is that you have to be everywhere and everything to everybody. Just to unify, I keep going back to that word. That's a good word. Yeah, yeah. unify yeah. your strategy and create uh, that 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 
that ebb and flow within your system and your Kinda campaign. Like, it's like seamless communication. And yes. it, it good way to seem, put it. It can seem overwhelming at first, but um, Rebecca, would you agree after you get into it, it kind of becomes second nature? Yeah. Right? Absolutely. As you're, oh, you know, it just kind of becomes second nature. You put the hat on for that channel, you put the next one on, but overall, it's all the same, the same yeah. messaging. Yeah. Just packaged yeah. up in a different way. Right. Exactly. And it goes back to what you were talking about of putting yourself in your customer's shoes, really understanding right. you have to understand what are they looking for? You really have to understand your customer in order to, yeah. to make that work. And there are some brands that just do it so well. We'll have to we could dedicate a whole show to that. We'll have to do that sometime. For sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So moving along to N. Never. Okay, this one is actually my favorite. I do love this one. Yes. <laughs> Never lose a lead. Yeah. <laughs> Never lose a lead. I love lead generation. I remember back in the old days, like, I mean, old days, like I'm really going to sound old here, but like 2001, 2002, I remember that when I would go to the grocery store or I would be running my errands, I would think I'm not coming home without five business cards. Mm. And I would talk to everybody. And that is how I started building my business. Well, these days, it's so much easier. Oh, mm. you, you've got, you know, lead capture pages. You send them to a landing page. They enter their own information. So it's not like coming home and losing business cards like it used to be. So, yeah. um, so very think, true. yeah, it's so different. But now you have the opportunity to nurture that lead and, and really take them through that process of building trust and credibility and really letting them get to know you. Yeah. And even on a more high level, I think we could even mention the importance of a lead score, right? Uh, depending yeah. on what you're using. I mean, that is so critical for yep. not losing your leads. Yeah, really understanding um, what kind of action they've taken with right. your with your content, with your company. Right. So assigning uh, a number to that. So have they maybe attended a webinar? Or have they downloaded one of your case studies or white papers or uh, an infographic? How interactive are they, which leads you to how likely are they to actually buy from you? And it also allows you to uh, really stay on top of, keep your finger on the pulse of those slipping away. So those that have opted right. in that maybe are losing interest. Um, there's so much you can learn when you really start to pay attention to what actions your audience is taking, right. how they're interacting with your company, with your content, and then how as a, as your marketing, if it's just you as a marketing team, you can better provide that solution. So I think, you know, for 2018 exactly. right now as you're reflecting as you're assessing uh, take a look at your processes take a look at your systems and those funnels where is that leak within your landing pages what emails aren't causing people to actually click through what copy on your website hasn't been updated in maybe years there's so many places that you could potentially be losing leads and this is where we talk to so many clients and they come to us and they say you know traffic has slowed down by 50 percent and uh, we, you know we don't understand what's going on and so often it's quite easy to do an audit of Exactly what I just said. Uh, you know, what is going on with the copy across your marketing campaigns? Is it actually converting? Are you actually paying attention right. to how interactive your audience is with your uh, with with your company? And then to your point, are you nurturing them to actually move them into, you know, from a lead to a sale uh, right. to a consistent buyer that comes back time and time again? So good time. Take a step back, as I said, and really uh, take a look at are these things that you put into play still serving you? Are they still working uh, and are they going to continue to work in 2018 or are there some tweaks that you can make? You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You're not starting all over again. Right. Uh, but just some minor tweaks that you can make that could radically change uh, that outcome. Yep. 
I agree with everything you said and pay attention to those touch points. Those are so important. How often are they opening those emails? How often have they stopped engaging with your content altogether? Are they still engaging with you? Because there will be a, you'll find that there's a sweet spot where you know that this is a good time that they will most likely buy something from you. And, mm-hmm. and you know, it's just, it just comes back to the data really. Yeah. Like you said. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we are going through the acronym DOMINATE and how you can use this DOMINATE formula to really set yourself up for success in 2018. And we are to, (laughs) hey, always be listening to Uh, stay. I'm laughing because this involves Twitter. So this for real, now I'm being for real is my favorite one because this is Twitter. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, definitely. It is such an amazing (laughs) social listening tool, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, Brand 24, you always talk about that one. Um, Mm -hmm. Mention so many tools that could be used for this, but boy, is it ever important to be listening to what people are saying about your brand, to their experiences, to their feedback. Oh. I can't even tell you how important that is. And you and I have seen that so much over the years, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And just the use of Twitter to be able to do exactly that, where you're doing more than just listening, you're hearing, you're empathizing, and you are then adding this into... Uh, your daily routine for marketing where you are actively involved in listening to the conversations that are going on. So you're using tools like Brand24 or um, you are on Twitter and you're creating lists that allow you to listen in on those conversations or you're monitoring hashtags, you know, using tools like Keyhole to monitor hashtags and really pay attention to the conversations that are happening within those hashtags. And all of that, all of that listening uh, allows you to create a better product, uh, allows you to provide uh, services that meet that specific need. And it all goes back to that iteration tool where so often it's the simple things that we can miss because we get so close to our business. And when you start to listen, you go, wow, I didn't even think yeah. about that, that being a particular problem that I could solve, but it is. And so now you can work that into your marketing and create a piece of content, uh, whether it's a video or whether it's an ebook or a download right. that solves that particular problem. So yeah, listening has so many benefits. They're just so far reaching um, that it's hard to imagine that this hasn't always been uh, a part of our strategy. I but yeah, I, I just, you know, you look at how we've evolved in online marketing, and this is definitely one of those strategic, yeah. just critical pieces um, that I know a lot of people say, well, Rebecca, I don't have time. Yes, you do. You put it into your calendar and you come in 15 minutes per day. And this goes back to having your systems and your tools and your technologies. Right. So it's quick and it's easy. and. Yeah. Because you don't have to, we're saying, listen, listen, you don't have to take time out and respond to everything. That's a whole different area of social media. Right now, social listening and just listening is just paying attention to it. I mean, people think I'm on Twitter a lot, but I am often on there looking at things where I'm not even tweeting. I'm just researching. It's a fantastic research tool. And so, I mean, you can do this sitting in bed on your phone, flipping through, checking things before you go to sleep at night. You don't, you don't have to respond to anyone. (laughs) This is for yourself. This is your way to get feedback and ideas and uh, way other problems. Like Rebecca said, other things that you can solve for your customers. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Just think about if you're not listening, what are you right. missing out on? What are what are the symptoms that are happening right now that you could really drill down into and solve that from a root level as opposed to when those symptoms become a full blown problem and you're trying to solve it? you know, from a 100,000 or even a 10,000 foot level. So it just really allows you to be more creative in your business, Mm -hmm. uh, allows you to get as close as possible to your customers. 
So that you're not sitting back wondering, you don't have to guess exactly. what they're dealing with, you know. You know. Exactly. I met with a client. Uh, it was actually a week ago today, last Tuesday, and I was in a meeting and I was telling her all these ideas and things. And she said, wow, this is so cutting edge. And I was thinking to myself, all I did was spend 20 minutes researching on Twitter before I came in here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like yeah. everybody should be doing that. Yes, but you do understand the basics of how to perform that type of an audit and how to get to the bottom of that and yes. how to really understand who your audience is. And that's why we always start with that at square one and, and really getting inside because as we know, to get you know into the head and into the heart of your audience, right. it does yes. take that empathy and understanding of what are they really dealing with? What are they going right. through? Because yeah. God forbid you're solving a problem they don't actually have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All um, right. So moving on, we are to T in dominate, which is tackling execution. So tracking, monitoring, all of that stuff that really has a bias towards action, the doing part of what we do. <laughs> yes. Yes. And anytime we talk about data and monitoring and tracking, I just I get excited because it truly is the should be the foundation for the decisions you're making because you can track everything. I promise you. Talk to Rebecca. There is a tool that can track anything you want to track to yes. make sure you're on. And so it just goes back to what we said at the beginning for creating an agile strategic marketing approach. You're testing everything and you're pivoting here, changing here, tweaking here, not for the sake of doing it, but because you're tracking and monitoring. And, and I mean, it is it is a way to grow fast when you approach things that way. Well, it, it just comes back to paying attention, uh, paying attention to what's going on in your business. I have right. seen it so many times where the founder or the CEO gets so removed from the company that there's no way to understand what that customer experience should look like or right. uh, how to meet the needs of your audience. And so paying attention means at every level yes. of actually being involved uh, within your business to the point that you understand you understand what the needs are, how you're meeting them. You understand how that uh, all of that is performing within uh, your marketing yes. so that you can make those data backed decisions. Because as we mentioned at the beginning, iteration for the sake of iteration is silly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. And, but we can get caught up in that hype, right? Where we're listening to people saying, you should be doing this. It's the latest. It's the greatest. It's this great new fad uh, where we say, yeah, latest and greatest. There can be a reason to that. <laughs> but so often it's the process, the process that you've been <clears throat> yes. over the last year that is going to get you to that next level and that next level and that next level. And it's committing to that process that I think so many people uh, have a hard time with, which is where that distance comes in, where you think, well, I'm not as good at this as maybe this person I could plug into that particular role. And you get further and further and further away from your own business and from your customers. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I've learned that the hard way. Um, just you know, just going through the years of business and kind of learned, oh, I'm not going to look at that or, oh, yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you have to tackle the execution yourself. Uh, you certainly could have a virtual assistant or a team member that's helping you with that. But you do need to understand every aspect of that, meaning why are you using it? What is it actually what kind of success is it creating within your business? Is it simplifying your processes and is it helping you ultimately meet your goals? So I, I, I don't want to confuse people to think that we're saying, oh, well, you can't ever pass anything off. Oh, certainly you can. Um, but if you need to do it uh, having a clear understanding of how it's serving your business before you pass that off. 
Which is why you get everybody you work with in a Slack, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That you can, conversation up, going on. Exactly. Yes. You can keep up with everything and you can walk away when you want. <laughs> All right. So wrapping us up with yes. the final E. The final E is exercising a healthy balance. So maintenance, iteration, and managing growth. So it's kind of pulling everything together that we've just talked about. Exactly. And it's so easy to gravitate towards one of those because you like that one and kind of neglect the rest. But like we've said throughout here is that it's it's so important to to keep your kind of hands in all of these and uh, not to neglect them. Right. You don't want to neglect yeah. checking your analytics and check them 60 days later. Like, oh, no, I should have made these changes last month. Yeah. Yep. You want to keep keep going. Keep yep. going. Always looking at what's working, what's not, and always being willing to let go. You know, I think there's that situation too where we can get so tied to an idea or a strategy or married to it. We're like, no, I'm going to cling to that. <laughs> and we do that to our own demise. So you really have to look at it from that data backed point of view where uh, you can say uh, either as an individual or as a team that, hey, you know what, this just isn't working for us or wow, uh, who knew that this was you know going to totally knock our socks off. Um, so right. there's so much in that. And it's just it's really balancing all of it and having an eye towards uh, that that uh, that action, always being willing to take action within uh, your marketing roadmap exactly. so that it's not getting stagnant, so that you're not just sitting on something for too long, so that you don't look back in two months and go, oh, God, why did I hang on to that? <laughs> and, you know, you and I have done that. Uh, I can think of one, maybe two examples of where you and I have had so much fun working on something together. But you know what? just wasn't working and we finally let it go and both of yeah. us have said why did we let that go two months ago <laughs> absolutely my goodness you know it's so funny Mia Voss just just popped in and me and I were having a conversation <laughs> last week about this exact same thing where we were early adopters to Google Plus and we all <laughs> hung on for so long because we were like yes this community is gonna make a comeback no no it's not <laughs> Uh, so there are things that we deeply invest in that we have to be honest with ourselves. And that's where it's so important. And me and I also discussed uh, really surrounding yourself with people that you trust, with people that are doing exactly what you want to be doing, that are doing or have already achieved exactly what you want to achieve within your life and your business so that uh, they can turn that mirror of truth on you. They can really help you see through the muck that we can sometimes get stuck in. And as I said before, you know, it, it happens because we are so very close to our business. And as creatives, as entrepreneurs, as small business owners, it's easy to get tied to our strategies, to our systems, to our processes, to our tools. Uh, and that's why I love this time of year. I think it's always a great time to reflect and take that step back. Absolutely. 100% agree. Hi, yeah. Mia. I see Mia in there. <laughs> <laughs> that among so many other reasons why we are friends, Mia. <laughs> oh, so you going to wrap this up? Yes. So dominate. So let's just yes. uh, you know, recap real quick here. So D, design an agile and strategic approach to marketing. Uh, super, super important. O, optimize your customer experience and manage your, your marketing stack. Uh, I integrate multi-channel marketing and never lose a lead. Very important. Always be listening to stay ahead. Uh, let's see, T, tackle execution, tracking, and monitoring. And then E, exercising a very healthy balance between ma maintenance, iteration, and managing growth. I so, love that. We need to do more acronyms. Love yeah. that. <laughs> I'm all about it. I love that. Yep. As we've discussed, I absolutely adore acronyms and try to create them in any way, shape and form that I possibly can. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it just makes it, it makes it sticky, right? Which is something we love as marketers. So thank you again, Diana, as always phenomenal conversation. And just yeah. real quick, we have a 
huge event coming up on Thursday and Friday. Uh, it is a brand new masterclass content we have never released before. And you are going to learn how to build a wildly successful business and live life on your own terms. Uh, we are doing this with a dear friend of mine, Deborah Trapin. Uh, we are bringing content together, like I said, we've never done before to show you how to design, how to plan, uh, and how to create the amazing 2018, the amazing year that you know you deserve within your business, you know you deserve within your life, uh, but maybe you're just not quite sure how to pull it all together and how to get there. So if you are an entrepreneur and you are tired of chasing the hustle, you are tired of that word grind, which believe me, I am all for hard work, uh, but I come at it from a very strategic point of view. Um, if you want to drop that manic feeling of rush, 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 and instead be purposeful in how you build your business in 2018, then I would love for you to join us. Leanne is here. Leanne is going to drop that link. And if you have any questions, um, the uh, email, everything that you need to do to contact us is right there within that page. But we would love to see you there. It's a two-day event. Uh, absolutely jam-packed with both sides. And that's what I love about this, Diana, is instead of just business and marketing focused, we're taking a holistic 360 degree view of how all of that weaves together because we know, that. yeah, we know that it all impacts, right? Exactly. Our decision, um, how we live our life is how we run our business and yeah. It uh, it's going to help you uh, build both sides of that so that you do have that balance within your life and business and you know exactly what you're going after, exactly what you want to achieve. And then as we talked about here today, you have that road that roadmap. So you've got those steps. Exactly. Um, and Deborah Trapin, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see her on that. Yeah, sassy she. Girl. What does she call herself? Sassy. I know she calls yes. herself sassy. Mm -hmm. She's yes. definitely sassy. <laughs> that she is. Well, and she has been uh, training on this for years and years and years. And every single time I listen to her, I. My mind is blown. Up. I just learned pumped so up. much more. Yeah. Oh, and pumped up is right. Yeah. Her her brand is it's all about firing people up and that is what she does for sure. So I am super excited about that. Like I said, hope we will see you there on Thursday and Friday. Uh, if you can't make it, we are recording it. Um, so you will be able to uh, gain access to the live recording. Uh, and then as always, we will see you back here next Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time for the Brand Authority Show with me and Diana Adams. Yay! Yes. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. All right, Diana, until next week. All right. I bye. will see you then. Thanks, bye -bye. everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.